Hey guys, so today we are going to focus on um, the actual scanning behind the liver. We'll talk about the liver segments, we'll talk about our patient prep, patient history, and our scanning technique. So as we talked about previously, our liver is divided up into segments. Um, we have our left lobe, which is divided into lateral and medial, and then we have our right lobe, which is divided into anterior and posterior. And then we have our first segment, which is segment one, which is the caudate lobe. Um, there is an article that is posted um, about using your hand to help you identify the different lobes. And the best way to do it is to practice. So here's a video actually of me trying to show you guys how to do this lobe as well. Try. Hey guys, so I thought we could quickly go over our liver lobes and how to use um, your hand to help you identify the different lobes. When you are doing it, you're gonna take your right hand, you're gonna make it into a fist, and you're actually gonna put your thumb underneath your fingers. Your thumb represents the caudate lobe. When you are identifying your lobes, you need to make your fist face you, okay? So facing me like this. And when we are looking at it, I'm going to use these two fingers, which will represent my left, um, my left lateral lobe, my left medial lobe. These two are going to identify the right superior portions of my liver. And this is going to be the right inferior portions of my liver. This finger here is going to represent the right anterior portion of my liver. And this one will be my right posterior portion of my liver. Okay, I want you to think about that in your head. So posterior, meaning it's closer to my spine. Anterior, meaning it's closer to my front or, well, yeah, my front. Okay, so when we are identifying our lobes, one is my thumb, which is caudate. Then we have two, which is our lateral, our left lateral superior. Three, which is our left lateral inferior. For A, left medial superior. For B, left inferior and medial. Five is my inferior anterior segment. Six is my inferior posterior segment. Seven is my superior and posterior segment. And eight is my superior and anterior segment. Hope that helps practice because practice makes perfect. Okay, so what we are going to do is just go through some images and practice identifying our lobes. Um, the more you do it, the better you'll get, the easier it all becomes, because practice makes perfect. So the first thing we're going to do is just think about our orientation of our image. This here is a transverse image of the liver, it's the superior portion, and I know that because I have my hepatic veins draining into my inferior vena cava. Um, you can see the middle hepatic vein there, the right hepatic vein and the left hepatic vein. The middle hepatic vein, remember, um, is what lies in the um, main lobar fissure, and the main lobar fissure divides the left medial lobe and the right um, anterior lobe. So, um, if we think about our image orientation, we have right, left, anterior, posterior, and that means that here we have segment two, which is our superior lateral lobe. We have segment 4A, which is our um, superior medial lobe, segment 8, which is our anterior superior lobe, and segment 7, which is our posterior um, superior lobe. Next, let's take again a look um, and think about our image orientation. So we have a long image of the left lobe of the liver. Um, we have superior. We have inferior, anterior, and posterior. You can see the left portal vein here. You can see ligamentum venosum. That's probably here, our left hepatic vein. So I have segment one here, which again is the caudate lobe. Segment two 
and segment three. So again, superior, inferior. Um, I know that segment two is my superior lateral. So I can probably guess that 4A is about here because it's that left hepatic vein which is going to separate 2 and 4A. And then segment number three is going to be our inferior um, portion of that lateral lobe. We have our transverse right hepatic vein image of the liver. So when we think about our image orientation, we have right, left, anterior, posterior. Of our right lobe, we have, um, oh, there we go, we have our annotations. For the right lobe, we have our anterior and posterior segments. My right hepatic vein is what divides anterior from posterior. So I have segment seven, which is posterior and superior. And I have segment eight, which is anterior and superior. Here we have an image of my inferior right um, liver. It's transverse. I know that based on how I'm looking at the kidney as well and the shape of the liver. Um, again, if we think about our orientation, we have right, left, um, anterior, posterior. And so if I think again that my liver, my right liver is divided into anterior and posterior, and I'm at the inferior portion, I know that I'm going to be looking at segments five and six. Segment six is more posterior than five. So six is going to be the one that's close to the kidney, and five is going to be the one that is more anterior, just like that. And one last image here to talk about. Um, we have the left lateral lobe in long. So again, if we think about that orientation, it's superior, inferior, anterior, and posterior. I know that um, with the left lobe, if I'm looking at the lateral portion, superiorly I have segment two, and inferiorly I have segment three. Now, I will tell you guys that sometimes you need to look in both trans and long before you can make a decision as to what lobe or what segment you are scanning, and this all comes with practice. The more you practice, the easier it gets, and the better you will be at identifying the different lobes, and that's really important when we are um, writing reports and we find lesions. We need to be able to identify what lobe they were in so that if someone is doing a follow-up, they know where to look. Um, and so that the doctor reading the report knows where the lesion of concern is. When we take a look at our normal liver, the echotexture is quite homogeneous. Um, it tends to be echogenic compared to the kidney cortex. And our portal veins have echogenic walls with hypoechoic lumen or anechoic lumen. Um, and the ligaments also tend to appear quite echogenic on ultrasound, and that's because of the fibrous tissue that they're made up of. Um, our hepatic veins don't tend to appear as bright as our, or the walls of our um, hepatic veins, sorry, don't tend to appear as bright as our portal veins. Um, now, when we talk about hepatofugal and hepatopetal flow, this is specific to the liver. So, if you are talking about blood flow in any other organ, you cannot use the terms hepatofugal and hepatopetal. To help you guys remember which one is which, I have my own little trick to remember. Um, when I think of hepatopetal, I think of a petal, and I think I'm pedaling towards the liver. So hepatopetal flow is towards, and hepatofugal is away. I remember that fugal is away because fugitives leave. Our patient preparation for our liver ultrasound is fast. We will go over some brief um, lab values that we may be looking at while we're doing or right before we're about to do an ultrasound focused on the liver. Um, we will look at ALT and AST um, along with the liver proteins first. So if these markers are raised, it typically indicates that the um, liver cells are damaged. ALP, on the other hand, is typically raised when there's um, some kind of obstruction. We often will do liver ultrasounds when bilirubin is high. So what's really important to know is that there's two different types of bilirubin. 
we have unconjugated and conjugated bilirubin. Before we even start talking about that, let's really quickly talk about where bilirubin comes from. It is one of the products um, of the breakdown of red blood cells. So when our red blood cells first break down, um, there's unconjugated bilirubin. That bilirubin actually goes to the liver where the liver will then conjugate it. And that conjugated bilirubin is what helps um, create or help produce bile. The other really important thing to know is that unconjugated liver, or unconjugated liver, unconjugated bile, sorry, um, if it is in high doses or in high levels in our body, it can cause damage. It can be really toxic to our tissue and result in neurologic damage um, versus conjugated bilirubin doesn't have that same toxic effect. So if we have really, really high levels of unconjugated bilirubin, it can be because we have an underlying um, hemolytic um, disorder and that would result in the destruction of red blood cells really really quickly and our liver might not be able to keep up with all of those red blood cells breaking down or our liver could potentially not be working very well and might not be able to take in those cells can't take that unconjugated bilirubin and conjugate it properly on the other hand, if we're thinking about conjugated bilirubin that's elevated, um, that would be that same bilirubin that is um, used to produce bile. And so what we're thinking is that there may be some kind of obstruction that isn't allowing the bile to go through um, and get where it needs to go. So hopefully when you can think about what um, a specific lab value means, it can help narrow your picture down and hopefully guide you to answering that clinical question, which is the most important thing when we're doing our ultrasounds. When it comes to scanning our liver, um, it is something that is really, really methodical. And you really, really need to be methodical because it's the largest organ in our body. The other thing about the liver that makes it quite tricky is that it's protected by our ribs. So the advice that I have to give to you about scanning the liver is one, take your time, and two, break it up into sections. When you scan, for example, the transverse left lobe, what I tend to do is break it up into lateral and medial segments. My first sweep, I'll ask my patient to take a big breath in and hold it. I'll then sweep through the medial portion of that liver and I make sure that I start superior to the liver and I sweep inferiorly all the way through the borders of that left medial lobe. Once I've exited all of that liver tissue, I then sweep back up superiorly and finish where I started my sweep, and then I'll allow my patient to breathe. Again, that entire time that I'm sweeping, I'm being mindful of how slow or how quickly I'm doing this sweep. If it's really, really difficult and for whatever reason I don't think I can get through and my patient's been holding their breath for the past five minutes, I'll let them breathe. Also, please note that five minutes was a bit of an exaggeration. If my patient is holding their breath for any long period of time, I will definitely be letting them breathe. My next sweep of that left um, lobe is going to now be focused on the lateral portion of the left lobe. So again, I'm going to have my patient take a big breath in and hold it. And I'm now going to angle my probe so that I'm focusing a little bit more on that lateral portion and again, I'm going to sweep all the way from superior to inferior through all of my borders. And I'm going to go back up, making sure that I sweep superior to that liver again um, to ensure that I haven't missed anything. It is so important that we do all of our sweeps in trans and in long before we start taking images and that we do our best to interrogate the entire organ as well. You need to get that full picture before you start taking all of your focused, zoomed up images. When it comes to scanning the liver, the reality is you just need to do it. 
you're going to learn really, really quickly how to scan intercostally because of the fact that there are some patients who, even if they're fully NDCube, subcostal is just not an ideal window. There's so much bowel gas in the way that we can't see any liver or tissue whatsoever, which means that we have to go through those ribs and that is the only way we're going to see the liver. I've uploaded another video for you guys to take a look at which shows someone scanning through the liver um, and what windows they use and how they sweep. I want you to take note of every time that they don't sweep through all of the tissue on the screen. Remember, if you're not sweeping through all of the borders, there's a chance you're going to miss a mass. And it could be something benign, but it could be something malignant. And if you don't see that mass, the reporting doctor isn't going to see the mass, and neither is the referring physician. Um, remember to check out that discussion post um, about why we may use a linear transducer while scanning the liver. And hopefully you guys found this helpful.